Now, as many of you know, the COVID-19 pandemic is getting worse. Healthcare professionals are running low or are running completely out of personal protective equipment. Uh, I think a lot of people out there aren't taking this seriously enough. A couple days, I was reading that COVID-19 is on track to kill more Americans than World War II. And for me, that was a call to action. So I designed a homemade uh, PAPR, which is a powered air purifying respirator. It's uh, made from a tote. So I call this one a tote air purifying respirator, TAPR for short. Uh, it's made from components you can buy online or at a hardware store. Uh, specifically, I, I look for components that are not gonna be running low on supply given the current pandemic. Uh, and my, my thought is that people can build this device at home and donate it to healthcare professionals to help protect them for the coming months. Uh, the concept behind a powered air purifying respirator is that you have uh, some fans or some powered pressure air, uh, pushing air through a filter of some sort. Um, I've built this design around a HEPA filter with a 99.97% filter rating. Um, a lot of people think that HEPA filters don't filter viruses because they're only rated for 0.3 microns. NASA's actually studied this and found that viruses that are smaller than 0.3 microns, so in this case, uh, 0.1 micron is for coronavirus. Um, the filter actually filters them out at a higher rate than the rating uh, through a process called diffusion. So high rated HEPA filters will help filter out the, the virus particles at a 99.98% efficiency. So if you are a maker or a tinkerer or hacker inventor type person, uh, you can go to the website to download the plans to build this. It's tapper.design, T-A-P-R dot design. Uh, if you have questions, you can email tapper.design at gmail.com. If you are a healthcare professional and you think this device is useful or would protect you, uh, reach out to your community on the internet and let people know that you want the device and that you need people to make it. Um, there are a lot of people out there trying to make things right now, but they're not sure what to make and they're not sure if people will accept the donations. So we just need to coordinate getting the makers in touch with the healthcare professionals to get them the supplies they need. Um, some people think it might sound crazy to use something like this in a hospital setting. Uh, there are CDC guidelines for this. When a pandemic reaches a severe enough scale, there is what they call crisis strategies where some of the rules start to change, regulations start to go away. Um, for example, when you start reusing N95 masks and reusing surgical masks, that would be considered a crisis strategy uh, other strategies include using sewn cloth masks that you see people making on the internet, um, as well as homemade PPE, which this would, would fall under that. So I think that as hospitals uh, run sufficiently out of supply of their PPE, uh, they will accept a donation of a device like this. Um, the intent of this design is that it's completely reusable, which will help as the pandemic persists. Uh, any design that's disposable, I, f I feel, will uh, just result in running out of the supplies no matter what we build. So I've focused on a completely reusable design. So I want to show uh, how to use it, um, talk a little bit about, about how it works. Uh, the fans blow the air through the filter, and because it's high pressure inside, um, any little holes uh, due to the bolts or the neckline or the shroud around the tote, uh, aren't a concern because the air will be flowing out of the tote through those holes and the virus particles can't enter. Uh, so that's the advantage of a, of a powered air system. Um, it's also more comfortable to wear. Uh, I've seen a lot of pictures of healthcare professionals with a lot of damage to uh, where they wear the N95s because they're wearing them for so many hours. And this could provide some relief so that they can wear something that doesn't contact them in that area. It's battery powered. Uh, this is a 12 volt battery, should last about six to eight hours, and it can be recharged uh, with a wall charger. So uh, when you first get the device, um, you might need to adjust the headgear. 
Uh, there's a knob in here you can rotate to adjust the size of the headgear band. And depending on how you plan to use it, if you have no intention of ever removing the shroud from the tote, um, you can use some duct tape to seal the shroud to the tote to uh, maybe make it more secure or to prevent some of the air from coming out this way, which would increase the airflow coming out the neckline. When you first put it on, you need to expand uh, the drawstring for the shroud to the full size. And then um, I would imagine you'd want the fan on the entire time just to be a little safer. So I'm gonna show you how to put it on. Uh, you wanna make sure your face doesn't come in contact with the outside of the shroud. Um, we're gonna consider the outside of, outside of the shroud contaminated and try to put it on without contacting it. I've tried it a few different ways and, and what works the best for me is I kind of expand the shroud and make sure it's out like this um, so you can see it's fully opened like this and I grab the tote kind of with my my palms uh, wide to get a nice secure grip on it and I kind of just shake it to make sure it looks like I have a wide opening and I'm really aiming to get my chin in first safely and then I'll go the rest of the way. So I'm going to show you from a couple of angles. So here I'm going to go in like this. And I'm going to show you again from, from straight on here. So the idea is to kind of get your whole face in and only touch the inside of the shroud. And you want to secure it so the headband is on your forehead and it should be a nice comfortable fitting uh, you should have full control over where you put your head in the tote it should not feel wobbly or feel like it's going to fall off of your head uh, once it's on use the drawstring and you kind of gather the fabric around your neck now this fabric is not breathable fabric it is a waterproof fabric so that's to prevent air from going through the fabric so really the air should only be going through the neckline and, and a little bit out the edges here. Um, you can, if you have to wear a stethoscope, you can have the stethoscope on when you put this on and you can actually grab the stethoscope from through the fabric to pull it off of your ears and, and back onto your ears. And if you need to keep this on for a really long uh, period of time, depending on how the situation is uh, you could even have like a camelback water bottle uh, with the tube in here so you could drink water without having to remove uh, the headgear when you're done using the device and you need to remove it um, you would need to sanitize it the same way you would sanitize uh, a capper or a capper hood um, so you'd want to use some whatever sanitizing wipes you use alcohol wipes and you know you can wipe down the, the whole outside of the tote wherever you're worried that they might have made contact. Um, that's why I, I try to keep the tote as, as smooth on the outside without putting things out there as, as much as I could. So you can wipe down uh, the outside of the tote. And then you want to wipe down the shroud as best you can. So you might need to look up and really get this front neckline area is a critical area because when you take this off there's a chance you could you know brush into contact with it um, you can take this off by yourself i've i practiced it several times uh, but everything's always easier with a, a person to help you so it would also help to have someone help wipe it down so once you uh, think you've wiped everything sufficiently um, the next thing you would do to get it off is release the drawstring. And then from the outside, I pull on the fabric to open up that drawstring uh, area to get it a little bigger. And then I'm gonna rotate this off and I want to keep my face in the toe area as much as possible until I'm ready to fully remove it. So I'm gonna show you how I do that from a couple of angles. So I grab it securely uh, by the sides and I just rotate forward and you see my chin 
is still touching the tote, not the shroud, and I can rotate it all the way off of my head. And from there, now I can pull through like this. And that way, I've never touched the outside of the shroud. So I'm going to put it on again. Okay, so to get it off, rotate forward, keeping the chin touching the tote until it's rotated forward, and then I can pull it forward. At that point, you can just set it down. Um, I'm not sure the best way to store it because I'm not familiar enough with what's going on inside a hospital setting, but you can actually leave the fans on the entire time if that seems safer. Um, you could store it like this and leave the fans on if you're worried about the air in the room that this is being stored in. And you can actually charge this uh, while it's, it's running um, there's instructions on the battery on how to do that, uh, but if you're you're done with it and you can just turn it off, and you can disconnect the battery, um, and then just plug the battery uh, into a wall charger. So I think that covers it pretty well. If you have any questions, either go to the website uh, tapper.design or email tapper.design at gmail.com. Thank you.